and then he'll put his shoulder down and run right over you. Who do you think's going to get the ball? Green on the sweep. Touchdown, Indiana. Well, that's how you score 12 touchdowns. <laughs> he, must, he must date the head cheerleader or something. He scores right. all the touchdowns inside the one. You know, everybody gets it down there. He scores from the one. 11 touchdowns on the regular season. One here tonight, and Bill Mallory's troops take a 6-0 lead with 7.09 remaining in the first. And, and that was a, a nice drive set up by some very good defense. Remember, they played on a short field. The Indiana defense set up that touchdown run by Trent Green. 53 yards and nine plays, just about four and a half minutes it took. Bunnell for the extra point. And it is good. 7.09 remaining to be played in the first quarter, and Indiana strikes first. 7 0 is our score. We'll be back. Seven oh nine remaining to be played in the first quarter as Indiana put together an impressive scoring drive, going 53 yards in nine plays, 436. Not a bad 32 yards for Vaughn Dunbar. Yeah, but you notice who scored the touchdown? That's the right. old quarterback. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you send the girl roses, and the other guy <laughs> yeah. takes her home. Yeah, and that always seemed to happen. See, I, I, I've been impressed. It's the first time I have seen Dunbar alive this year, and he is uh, everything that I had heard. Quite honest, he's got speed. He's got toughness. He'll, he catches the ball. He has 28 catches on the year. And you can see why people are awfully excited about his uh, future after this game. But as we talk, really, this game is, is not necessarily about guys like Von Dunbar. It's the guys who will never play again. And there's, well, 48 seniors playing tonight. You see Kendrick Bell and Reggie Miller back for the Baylor Bears. Bell will kick it off. Well, Santana Dotson told us, he says, listen, I know this is my last game for Baylor and I want to make an impression, but I know there are a lot of people maybe watching this game and I want my draft to go up a little bit higher. Vanilla short kick. It'll come down to Kendrick Bell on about the four. Bell spins away, hit hard at about the 19-yard line. No penalty. Some of the Baylor players wanted a late hit, 17-yard return. Let's go down to Craig Sager as Baylor seems to have changed their offensive game plan, Craig. Well, thank you, Ron. In the first two possessions, we saw Baylor throw the ball repeatedly to the outside. What that has done is force Indiana to spread their defense the entire width of the field. Look for Baylor in this possession to run to the veer to the inside and also look for a big gain, possibly, on the play-action pass. Big plays have been very much a part of the Baylor offense. Third time starting on the 20-yard line. Now, Grant Taft told us they're going to stick with their game plan and just keep pounding to see what Indiana does. Absolutely. Here it comes. Straight right up the middle, up to the 25. A pickup of five on the play. Robert Strait, the number one recruit out of the state of Texas. And any of you who know about Texas high school football, that is saying something. In 1989, could have gone anyway or came to Baylor because he wanted to be a great tailback and, and running back. They moved him to a fullback, and he was disappointed with that for a while. But in a veer offense, the fullback is really a misnomer because you're not primarily a blocker. You still run the ball an awful lot in the veer. The 6'1", 240-pound. He's a big one out of Cuero, Texas. Don't give it to him again. He breaks the tackle up over the 40 to the 45 and finally run out of bounds. Robert Strait who came off arthroscopic knee surgery back in October, picks up a big gainer as Hagen finally runs him out of bounds, a pickup of 21. Yeah, watch the left guard, John Turnbaugh, right here, step down here. This man comes out, he's going to option it, so the fullback comes right in there off the tackle who steps outside. The left guard again, Turnbaugh steps down on the nose guard, the left tackle comes down, that's number 75, Arroyo. Just a gaping hole in there, and that's what the uh, problem the uh, Veer can present. He'll come back and option it too. Right again, this time no place to go. Straight, picks up about one. You talk about Turnpaw, 304 pounds for Turnpaw. John Miller comes up with a tackle. Straight, we talked about he had scoped his knee on October 1st, came back just in 11 days. He only missed one game, had 115 yards against Rice, but then he injured his ankle against A&M. Yeah, it didn't go well for him. And again, talking to him this morning, I was impressed because it would have been very easy for a guy like that to quit. A high school, you know, all everything in the state of Texas, but he hung in there, went, played through some adversity, and now he's getting his due. Here's goes in motion. Joe on the option. Excellent defense by Indiana as Joe tries to reach over to get to the 50-yard line. Mark Hagan again on the tackle, number 47. Brings well, up a third and six play. Well, you're seeing the second option in the veer. The first one we've seen with Robert Strait, the fullback. 
Now, when the defensive tackler in steps uh, inside to take away the fullback, J.J. Joe will keep the ball, and he'll either p uh, pitch it or keep it. Now, that was a good decision by J.J. Joe there. He didn't gain much yards, but the pitch man was taken, and just get out of it with a minimal loss, which he did there, and set yourself up for third down. Baylor 0 for 2 on third down conversion so far this evening. One set back, two wide, three wide receivers to the right. Joe throws to the left of the tight end to Pierce. He finds his way up to the 40, down to the 37-yard line, Alonzo Pierce out of Houston Yates. Mike Middleton on the tackle, a pickup of 13. You know, Grant, Grant Taft was saying about Pierce this week that he's probably the best athlete on our team. And we ask our tight end to do a lot. He said he catches screens like this. He'll catch the ball over the middle. He'll block at the point of attack. And he can get downfield. He's a good option route runner as well as Alonzo Pierce. And we saw him catch his second pass of the evening. And he's been very good blocking at the point of attack thus far tonight. Pierce on the year only had 10 receptions. His longest was 34 against Texas Christian. Joe looks for the big play. Oh, incomplete to Lee Miles. I think he may have jumped too soon. Yeah, it looked like Lee Miles slipped a little bit on, on the uh, natural grass. The grass here, they, they haven't played. Baylor has not played on grass since I think the second game of a year ago when they played at Arizona State. And uh, everybody in the Southwest Conference plays on turf. Okay. Okay. That one, that one. What, Pete, what happened now, the first play? It was all zone. The first option was all They got it kicked. He got pushed. Oh, that's good sound he inside as we go back to live action. Joe Mims on the handoff up to about the 39-yard line. Let's go back into the huddle and see exactly what goes on on the Baylor sideline. Third and 12. Was running, but he was late. Right right now, by number nine, right now, hey, still now, Frankie, Bamba, like we were. Uh, Ferris, you're going to have to. You get pushed by the tight end. Now string it, okay? Just the same way we worked. Two. Tight end down, taking quarterback. Just make sure that when they get that... Well, that is Scott Smith, defensive back coach. He was talking to Ferris Walker, who is one of his corners, about as soon as you see that tight end blocked down, you've got to take the option, man. Joe back to pass again. It is complete to David Mills, who slips the tackle. Gets yeah. up to about the 27-yard line. It may not be enough for the first down. It's going to be close. It probably will make a pickup of about 13. You know, Ron, you said something interesting, slipping a tackle. And I was talking to, to Grant Taft about David Mims this week. He said, you know, the, the thing about Mims is he always seems to make the first guy miss. And you see a clear shot there by the linebacker uh, who had a shot at him, but he made him miss. And some guys just have the ability, when a, when a defender's close to them, to be able to make some sort of move and make people miss. David Mims can do that for Baylor. in motion. Joe straight up the middle to straight. Farrell on the tackle. Pick up of about three. 317 remaining in the first. Indiana leads at seven to nothing. You know, this Indiana defensive team has really not seen much option. I guess at the end of the year, they played a little bit of option in the second half against Purdue, mm -hmm. but they certainly have not seen a veer team. And, and quite honestly, they've done a reasonably good job thus far tonight. Bill Mallory, a very solid program he has developed here at Indiana. Second down, eight yards to go. Ball just inside the 24-yard line of Indiana. Miles in motion. Baylor continues pounding it up the middle, and that was their game plan coming in as straight is hit by Troy Mason. Well, what you look for in a Veer fullback is, is just what Grant Taft has in Robert Strait. You, you know, he goes 245 pounds, and he doesn't take a long time to get started. But this has been a very balanced mm -hmm. team thus far tonight for Baylor. And you speak of balance? That ah. is about as balanced as you can get. Third down and four. Ball on the 20 to 10 remaining in the first. Oh, the post pattern's open. Hmm. Pierce in motion. Joe is hit behind the line of scrimmage by Farrell, and that is a loss of three on the play. 
You talk about the post pattern being open, Pat. You know, yeah, and Baylor has had an awful lot of big plays to Melvin Bonner here. You, you see all this area right in here? This is the post pattern. Now, this is the free safety. He's coming up here. This wide receiver has this entire area to run a play. Now, Bonner has had a very big year on that one route. That's all he's run is the post pattern, and he's caught six touchdowns. So I would expect to see a Baylor on their next drive to come back with a post play. 38-yard field goal for Jeff Ireland. And this is something Grant Taft was concerned about his kicking. Ireland only 11 to 25, and there is the fake. Going deep in the end zone! Oh, Complete! Kent Bretham on the pass. Intended for Ireland. He had him open. Well, you know, we said at the beginning of the first quarter, bowl games are for fake uh, field goals, fake punts, punt blocks. He had his holder, Brentham, wide open. Now, Grant Taft called, uh, said this week that I'm determined, determined to call this fake uh, field goal. It should have been an easy score. But it wasn't. 115 remaining in the first. Indiana 7, Baylor nothing from the Domino's Pizza Copper Bowl. We'll be back. Back to pass. Goes to his second Oops. choice, goes to his third choice, and then he is hit from behind by Matthew Pearson, number 48. Well, yeah, Matthew Pearson is one of all oh, six or seven defensive linemen that Baylor will roll into the ball game. You know, most most schools don't, can't even run a 4-3 because they can't find four good defensive linemen. Baylor has six or seven of them, and Matthew Pearson is one of those, a former linebacker. They moved him down to a defensive end. He still has the quickness, remembers how to run as a, line, as a uh, linebacker, even though he's put on some weight, and you saw the results there. Second down and 16, nearing the 32nd mark of the first. Oh, that'll be an offsides call against Baylor. The play continues, and Dunbar will be snowed under at the 15. He might as well put on a red jersey. Yeah, I think that was our man. Uh, Just a touch. Pearson. Man. Pearson got a little over anxious. Now, I'm, I'm surprised, though, that Von Dunbar stopped because yeah. he had a free play. And, and he did stop, and I think uh, everybody kind of froze there. You, you'll watch at the top of the, uh, or actually in the middle of the screen, that is Pearson. Dunbar, yeah, Dunbar had an opportunity, I think, to, to pick up a lot more than the five yards. Second down. So with 28 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter, with Indiana leading 7-0, it'll be second down and 11 with the ball sitting squarely on the 20. One the running back. It is Dunbar, and he'll get the ball on the left side. Baylor wow. strings the play out to the 23-yard line. Santana Dotson making the initial hit. Uh, Watch, he's got some great lateral movement. Yeah, he does. He and goes it, right down the line. And, and again, remember, Dotson is the guy who's been double teamed virtually every play. But no quitting the man. And that'll wrap up the first quarter of play from beautiful Tucson, Arizona. We have played quarter number one. Indiana leads it 7 0. Four. Shaking and making his way up to the 45 yard line. Baylor takes over. 50 yard punt, a 10 yard return. 14-17 left in the first. Indiana leads at 7 0. Well, Indiana very pleased with their defense so far. However, when Baylor is in a passing situation, they go to what's called a nickel two. Lance Brown, number 25, a very integral part of that defense. He twisted his knee on the last series. He's out for the game. Ron? I'll put some pressure on Damon Watts, the other free safety for Indiana, as they lead 7-0. 14-17 left to be played in the first half. Don't fall off that stool up here I'll now. tell you Ron, what, the first on. time I sat down, I almost broke my back. <laughs> Bad start of the year for you. <laughs> Pierce right behind Joe, and he goes in motion. Pitch back to Mims. What a way to find the hole opening. Crosses the 40 down to the 38 to the 36-yard line. I tell you, that, that's a nice run by David Mims, but he got some great blocks by his wide receivers, including number 80, Steve Stutzman. Watch as you see Mims, this is how they started the game, with the same play, the pitch off, uh, off the left side. Picks up a good block by Arroyo, the left tackle. Now watch the wide receivers coming. There's the tight end. 88 Pierce, the wide receiver Stutzman number 80. If your wide receivers block like that, you can turn those little five yard gains into 10 or 15. It was good personal effort by Mims. Baylor tries the middle again on first and 10 from the 36 yard line. It is John Henry in for Robert Strait. 
Well, you know, David Leakes, number 69, the sophomore for Baylor, playing in the right guard position for Monty Jones, who was suspended for the game by Grant Taft for breaking the team rules. He has done a very nice job thus far in this game. He should play left mountain, though, for him. Yeah, he is, there was a rumor he cut himself shaving last night and bled uh, sausage gravy. <laughs> <laughs> Joe pumps fakes, and he is going to be dropped. His first sack of the game as Bochamp and McDaniel are there to meet J.J. Joe. A loss of two on the play. Again, good penetrating defense here. You see how quickly they get off on the ball? I think it was 97 McDaniel who got off right at the right time, right when the ball was snapped, a perfect time. Bochamp is there to clean it up, but it was really Larry McDaniel, number 97, who got off the ball quickly and caused the problem. That brings up a third down and 12 as we near the 13-minute mark of the second quarter. You talk about Leaks. Grant Taff had the greatest line. He goes, I know that old boy's going to have his eyes are going to be glazed over. His <laughs> mouth's going to be dry. This is his first start. Yeah, but you know, he's settled in now. He has Come settled on. in. You get that first lick, you're ready to go. Single setback. Baylor takes to the air again. J.J. Joe throws it onto the Indiana bench. Well, you know, this has been very uncharacteristic of Baylor, what we're seeing here tonight. They have been, I believe, in three third and long, very long situations. And, and, and when you're running a veer team, you expect to be third and two, third and three. But the Indiana defense has taken that first option away. That's the fullback, Robert Strait. So, so uh, Bill Mallory's defense has done a very nice job. J.J. Joe just 4 of 11 tonight, and on the year he completed better than 50% of his passes as Ken Brentham, number 9, back to punt for Baylor. Scott McGowan, the single back to receive. Oh, Brentham tries to push it kick in it. the end zone. And don't he does. Do that. Finds the red Indiana, 38-yard oh. punt with the win, and Indiana will take over. First and 10 from their own 20, 12-39 remaining in the first half. Can't put those into the end zone. I mean, you, you just give up 10, 15, mm -hmm. 20 yards. Huh? If you're going to pooch it down the middle, you have to punt it very, very high to give your, uh, your special teams a chance to get behind it. Mm. Bochamp, you don't think some uh, number 95 right there, yeah. Second team all Big Ten takes a big hit there. Yeah, there's some guys flying around though. Just what we expected in, in a game. Yeah, no national championships That's at right. stake, but an awful lot of pride. Indiana calls their first time out of the ball game. 12-39 remaining in the first half. Indiana on top by a touchdown. Okay. Indiana wanted to keep their patterns early for Trent Green, easy early, in order to open things up, and it also helps him. And there's oh, an easy pattern, and he doesn't geez. complete it as he was looking for Rod Coleman, the tight end. Yeah, just, you know, he just took too much off it. You know, and that, that happens with quarterbacks sometimes. When you have a guy that wide open as he did right there, and, and he was wide open, the tight end Coleman, you try to make it an easy ball to catch, you're going to float it in there, go, 10 yards short, right in the dirt. Bill Mallory, originally from Sandusky, Ohio, coached at Miami of Ohio. Of course, that is the cradle of college coaches. How about total yards? 95 to 39. Dunbar, the only setback. And he gets the ball, and he is going to get hard right at the line of scrimmage. Well, you know, the thing about Bill Mallory, I think he has really stood the test of time. You think about 35 years in college football as a player and a coach, 28 winning seasons. Came into uh, Indiana in his first year in 1884. Did not win a game, went 0-11. But five bowl games for Bill Mallory the last six years. Now, he has done a great job. And, he, and what he said is, how we're going to win a Big Ten championship, uh, i got to get my players to believe. And I, I have good enough players to do it. We need a breakthrough win. And next year, it's a team like, uh, like Michigan. We need to beat a team like Michigan. Third and eight. Indiana was in the top two in the Big Ten and third down conversion from Ohio State. Green over the middle. He has a man open. It is complete to Thomas for a first down Indiana on their own 48-yard line of pickup of 26. You know, Trent Green has done a very good job this year spreading the ball around, and Eddie Thomas has been his leading receiver. 50 catches on the year. This is a this is a frozen rope. That is a doggone good throw to a receiver who is pretty well covered by Lachey Matson, number seven, the outside linebacker, but he hung in there in the pocket with some patience and just drilled the ball right down the middle, and Eddie Thomas goes up top to make the catch. Make that more interesting. Eddie Thomas, you said he led him with uh, 50 catches. He started only four ball games. Here's Dunbar, skips off the right side, barrels his way up for about 10 yard lines, maybe 10 yards, just short of the first down. Picks up about nine and a half with Shane Matson there for the stop. Interesting thing about watching Von Dunbar, and, and 
you, know, you look at guys like Emmett Smith in, in the pros and, and Bobby Humphrey reminds me a little bit of him is when, when guys get close to him, even when, lots of guys can make moves when, when they're out in the open field, but he is making moves and making people miss when they're right next to him. And, and that is a very difficult thing to do. Boy, this is a big play for Indiana. Second and one. You have so many different options for them when you have Dunbar in the backfield. They're going to go to the air. Green looking for pay dirt. It is oh. incomplete intended for Thomas Lewis. Had him. Had him, and Trent Green knows it, and he didn't get enough air on the ball. Kind of threw one of those liners, but... He's thrown into the wind, too, at that point. And well, you're right. Stiff, little, kind of a good breeze down there right now. You're right. And Thomas Lewis, number eight, has added the deep threat to this Indiana offense this year. Just kind of tripped it. Just turned had around. a chance, yep. Yeah. That brings up a third down and one for Indiana with 10.51 on the clock. Indiana two for four on third down conversions. Marks off the signals, hands off to Dunbar. Quick shot right up the middle. Is Shane Matson there for the tackle? Boy, but not before Dunbar. Boy, that quick hit gets yeah. the first down. But but did he get a good lead block? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you say Von Dunbar picked up the first down, but the fullback there, I think it was Todd Walker. Boy, did he put a shoulder on somebody. Uh, the inside linebacker, I think, was Hafford of Baylor to create the hole for Dunbar to run through. There's the time remaining and our score in the ballgame. I think Indiana had to know they had something good when the first time Vaughn Dunbar touched the ball in an Indiana uniform. He went 80 yards for a touchdown. Green rolling out to his left. Looking for anybody. He's going to run out of real estate. Oh, oh, oh he is penalty. hit hard. Oh, That'll be a man. penalty. My Woo. goodness, his clock, the parts were taken apart and cleaned. You know, he, he bounced right back up. And his contact may have popped out of his eye. Brian Hand. It may have been his eye. Let's that take a look. <laughs> Man, did he take a shot. There was absolutely no doubt that he was out of bounds. This is our hurt cam. <laughs> yeah. Kaboom. Oh, yeah. hurt me. That was Brian Hand. Yeah, you don't think some seniors like Brian Hand want to get those last couple of licks in on some quarterbacks before their Ooh. careers may well be over? Brian, the white line means the field's done. <laughs> but, you know, th this has been the difference in Trent Green this year from a year ago. Remember? A year ago he got benched. They thought he was, uh, well, maybe in their words, kind of a mousy quarterback, but he, he developed. He's come back to be a very strong leader, starting with their bowl game last year. Been a very physical player this season, as you saw right there. And he has had a very good football uh, year for the Hoosiers. What an exceptional young man talking to him last night. We see some numbers on Trent Green. He said it was a big psychological boost for him almost to sit out those four games last year as Baylor picks up their third penalty. And there is Dyer, his best friend and backup teammate. Yeah, and he, and he will signal in a lot of the players. They have a lot of confidence in Chris Dyer, the coaching staff. And at some point, sometimes, he'll help call plays. Dunbar, seven yards back of Green in the backfield. That gives him a running start. There he goes. He's got a little bit of running room down to the 10. A pickup of four on the play for Dunbar as Curtis Hafford is there for the tackle. You know, Ron, you mentioned something interesting. That, you know, Von Dunbar, who lines up seven yards in that eye formation, you need completely different types of offensive line for Indiana and for Baylor because Baylor runs that veer. It's a quick hitting thing. In the eye formation, you have to have linemen that can lock on the defensive players and can sustain their blocks, and particularly with a cutback runner like Von Dunbar because he can go anywhere. So you have to stay in your blocks a little bit longer. Second and five, a two tight end situation now for Indiana. Green running the option, crosses inside the five yard line. You know, bringing up a third and one. Yeah, again, the option play inside the 10 yard line. And many, many college football teams will do this. They'll, uh, they're eye football teams, they're throwing football teams. Until they get inside the 10 yard line, like Notre Dame, for example, and, and Indiana, they run the option down here because it's, it takes disciplined defense to play against the option. And de defense by nature is aggressive inside the 10 yard line. Third down and one. Hey. 5 left in the first. Two tight ends again for Indiana. Green will keep it. Easily crosses the five and makes his way down to the three as Marcus Lowe tries to stop him. Not enough. It'll be first and goal for Indiana with one second inside of nine minutes. Now, Ron, you, you mentioned that they've had some tough uh, 
traveling inside the 20 yard line this year. But I'll tell you, in tonight's game, they have been it's very productive oh, yeah. plays, picking up first downs, keeping drives alive inside the 20 yard line. They've thrown the ball well, they've run with some power, they've run outside, they've run options. The sequencing of plays that Indiana has shown this evening has been very imaginative and and quite honestly, rather successful. This is the 11th play on Indiana's drive that started way back on their own 20. Dunbar, no place to go. Now, Baylor is excellent against the run. They only gave up 112 yards per game rushing per team. Curtis Hafford on the tackle. Yeah, but usually when you have, as George Ballou signaling in the plays there, he's the offensive coordinator of Indiana with a man with a headset, and there's Bill Mallory. But... Uh, Usually when you have a, a guy who runs for 1,600 yards, you have a lot of 1,600-yard blockers, too. That's right. And, you know, Randy Snyder, the right tackle, number 69 for Indiana. Indiana's had a good year. Sean Harper, the left tackle. This offensive line is pretty solid for the Hoosiers. Walker behind Green and Dunbar on the fake. Green is going to be hit for a big loss back to the 16-yard line. Frankie Smith, number 37, out of Grosbeck High in Texas. You know, Frankie Smith may well be the best cover guy in the Southwest Conference, number 37. But this guy can tackle as well. Grant Taft was saying he's one of our best tacklers on defense. And again, when you're playing against an option or a rollout or a bootleg quarterback, you have to be able to cover uh, receivers downfield. But then you have to be able to come up, come up and make plays. And Frankie Smith just did a great job right there. A loss of 10, third and 14. Now, Indiana went to a wide open attack to improve their third down conversions. Eddie Thomas, Thomas Lewis, and Scott McGowan all split out for the Hoosiers. It's a draw to Dunbar. He's oh. tripped up. Boy. And they'll spot it at about the 15. Robin Jones, the defensive end, got a hand on him. We are in Tucson, Arizona for the third annual Copper Bowl. Arizona Stadium with seven minutes re even remaining to be played in the first half. Indiana struck first, and they lead it 7-0, along with Craig Sager and Pat Hayden. I'm Ron Thulin. Wishing you a happy new year. Happy new coming year up, to you. Yeah. That's right, coming up. And hopefully this game will be over before new year starts <laughs> anywhere in the world. <laughs> You're absolutely right. 27-yard attempt now for Ireland or for Bunnell. The hold is good. The kick is up and away, and it is also good. So Scott Bunnell, who is 9 for 10 inside of 40 yards during the regular season, connects on this one. It was 636 remaining in the half. Indiana up by 10. Wednesday night on 10 years probation. No! He's sentenced to hit the road. Is he the driver or the porter? Looks like a janitor to me. Man, you can't ask me to fix a bus and go to Washington with a bunch of funky kids. It's a nod. And Indiana had 17 drives of 70 or more yards. This was an even 70 yard drive. Took him 14 plays in 603. It was the field goal by Bunnell. I'd give the Hoosiers a 10-0 lead with 6.36. And inside, Indiana's huddle. Yeah, I, I, I was staying through that draw is there. We got to take that out. I was staying too long inside right. before coming out. George Blue, the offensive coordinator. Move inside. Just set back up. We got to get back out now. If he, if he hangs into uh, him, then you get your good move. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. Just come down. Step down. He's shooting inside behind the ice. Yeah, step down there. Well, they like the draw play, obviously. Kendrick Bell right on the goal line. He'll try the left side. He's going to be hit hard, just short of the 20-yard line, and Baylor takes over. And, Ron, here is why George Ballou likes to draw play. This should have been a touchdown, but Robin Jones right, right here comes up. He's the guy that gets a hand on the, uh, the ankle of Vaughn Dunbar. Otherwise, Von Dunbar scores. This is why George Blue is just talking about. See, great play there by Robin Jones going around the tackle and making the uh, stop. Otherwise, Dunbar dances in the end zone. So Jones did his job, but I would. Uh, Indiana's going to come back and run that draw play again. Baylor's had the worst field position so far in this football game. Let's see if they go back to banging straight up the middle again. A pitch back to Mims. Oh my! Hello, everybody. Boy, excellent defense as we thought. They're just a group of non-stars, but Hagen leading the pack. They get after you, and that's exactly what we thought. Yeah, Mark Hagen was talking to us last night. He's one of these seniors playing in his last game, number 47 in red, saying it's going to be very, very tough to give this game up. He knows this is his last game. He started playing when he was in third grade in uh, Louisiana. Game means an awful lot to him, and he says, hey, I want to go out on a very high note. His dad, Phil, was a three-year Letterman quarterback in Minnesota, and he asked Mark last night, is it hit you that this is your last game? He said no. 
Joe's got a little bit of time. It is complete up to about the 27-yard line, but the big hit is put on. Melvin Bonner, who is the leading receiver for Baylor, pretty good catch. He had, had to hear footsteps of Mose Richardson. Yeah, we have seen some pretty good defense, quite honestly, tonight, particularly by Indiana, but Baylor's had their moments on defense as well, and, and really, uh, you generally expect to see that in bowl games. You've had an awful lot of time to prepare. The, 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 the surprising thing to me, though, is how well they've taken away Robert Strait. Look what they've averaged. Third and uh, nine is what they've averaged. It's, you can't have that in a Veer offense. No way. And they'll give it to Strait for the first down. Barrels his way up to the 31-yard line before Bernard Whittington, number 86, the 6'6", 215-pound junior out of St. Louis, Missouri, with the tackle. You know, the quick handoff here on third and short is really one of the keys to making this thing happen. That really wasn't a read by J.J. Joe. That was a, a designated call. Oftentimes, uh, when you're in a short yardage situation, you just give the ball to a guy like Strait, and he'll bowl over two or three people for a first down. First and ten for Baylor. Miles in motion. Oh! Joe loses the handle, and he's going to have to sit on it. He, he caught it on the hip of Robert Strait that time. And like the wishbone, that is one of the bad parts of the offense. you got to make sure you pull it out. Well, you know, I, I think playing uh, option quarterback is, is a very difficult thing to do, and, and J.J. Joe and quarterbacks like him don't get enough credit because you have to make an awful lot of decisions. A drop-back quarterback has three, four, maybe five seconds to make up his mind. An option quarterback has to make up his time in less than a second. Is he going to give the ball to the fullback or not? And sometimes it's very difficult. J.J. Joe with a 3.67 grade point average in finance is a smart individual. And he has to be quick reader. Joe fakes it. Has to cut oh. it loose. And that's going to be incomplete. Oh. Lee Miles was there, number one for Baylor. Joe was directing traffic. And Damon Watts was there for the coverage. Well, that is a ball J.J. Joe should never ever had thrown. There's that old adage, you had never throw late down the middle. You hear that from yep. Pop Warner football on. He, he's directing traffic down the left side. He wants his receiver to go deep because the out pattern was taken away. And then you never throw this ball late down the middle. Now, this Indiana defense, remember early in the game, Baylor came out throwing out routes that were open, mm -hmm. okay? This Indiana defense has taken that away, but Baylor has not come back in their passing game and adjusted to that just yet. Three wide receivers to the left for Baylor is Joe. Straight drop back. It's in the flat. He has Miles open. Crosses the 50 down to the 46-yard line. Boy, he threw that on a rope back. Yeah, that, 25 that, yards. That was a very good throw by J.J. Joe and a patient throw. He's now 7 of 14 yards for 72 yards. And talk about the fact that Indiana switched from the 5-2 defense to the 4-3 this year. That seems to have helped these players. On that play, it didn't help quite that much. Straight and Mims behind J.J. Joe. Takes the pitch. Down the middle to the tight end. Oh. Incomplete as Melvin Bonner split out wide to the right. Was open. Wanted the interference. Remember the post pattern we talked about in the first quarter? That was it. That was what they were trying to set up off the play action fake. But Damon Watts, the free safety, was not fooled. He did a terrific job of getting back and not being fooled on the play action fake and taking the easy throw away. But remember, early in the first quarter, we thought they were setting that up. They came back to it, but Watts, the free safety, just did a marvelous job of making sure that uh, J.J. Joe couldn't have the whole middle of the field to lead Melvin Bonner. Second down and 10, 329 remaining to be played in the half. Indiana by 10, Steve Stutzman. Now into the lineup for Baylor. Right up the middle, up to the 41-yard line, goes Robert Strait, the fullback. John Miller on the hit. We talk about Robert Strait. We've talked a lot about him. This is a young man that had 127, that's not a typo, touchdowns in his high school career. 52 his junior year and over 8,400 yards in his high school career rushing. Yeah, and again, he did this in the state of Texas. You, that's right. you know the quality of, of high school football they play. 46 yards on the ninth for Robert Strait on eight carries. So he's had a productive first half. And he walks around with his little can of Copenhagen. Get that snuff. Good Texas running back. Joe, pump face, tries to go down the sideline. Nobody there for the football. Melvin Bonner stopped as Mike Middleton was on the coverage. 
you know, if, if those corners of Indiana are bumping, running, and taking away the out patterns, you have a couple of options what Baylor can do, both their passing game and their running game. You see how these corners are up here now? They're taking away the out routes, the short routes. Well, there's a couple of things you can do. You can use the tight end down the slot. You see that that, that route is just taken away. Good defensive coverage. You can use a tight end down the middle or run your option and pitch the ball right down that alley where he isn't uh, covering. Snap a little high. What? Brentham Ooh. just gets the kickoff as the rush was on. McGowan calls the fair catch. Baylor's oh. going to be able to stop it, and they don't get it. Oh. I don't think anybody saw it, Pat. Gee, a 46-yard punt, no return. Baylor had an excellent opportunity, and that has to frustrate Grant Town. But we have 237 remaining in the first half. The Bears trail Indiana by 10. This is the uh, punt that went to the end zone, but watch how many Baylor players had an opportunity a, a, at this. Ray Matthews was down there, Marcus Lowe. I mean, that, that's a difference perhaps in, in giving your defense a chance to keep Indiana down, pin downside, and, and get a score on the board before halftime. They, they just let it get through them when they shouldn't have. Well, Loeb had a good shot at it, wasn't able to get it. First and 10 on the 20 for Indiana. On the fake, Trent Green throws out to the right flat. It is complete, another first down to the big tight end, Rod Coleman. Let's go down to Craig Sager on the sideline. Craig? Well, thank you, Ron. Down 10 to nothing, you may say the odds are against Baylor. However, Grant Taft has succeeded against the odds since he arrived at Baylor two decades ago. It's been called the miracle in the Brazos. We'll go to Waco, Texas at halftime. We'll also visit with Dick Steinberg of the Jets on the uncertainty of the NFL draft. Back to Ron Thulin and Pat Hayden. There is Grant Taft, 20 years, and boy, I tell you, his name's been mentioned with a lot of coaching jobs. We asked him today if it was difficult. He goes, well, I had to consider him, but he likes Baylor. Green again. No pressure by Baylor. Throw it out to the flat. A pickup of about 10 again as Ross Hales comes down with it. Pickup of 11 and another first down for Indiana. Well, you know, I love to see teams come back with plays that are successful. The play earlier, they threw the ball to the tight end, Rod Coleman. This time, they come right back and throw it to the, their other tight end, Hales, number 88. And again, Trent, Trent Green was trying to deliver the ball down the middle. He had second thoughts. He comes back and boom, and throws the ball. Actually, it was Todd Walker, I guess, who made Todd that uh, made that catch. Todd Walker, a former tight end. They moved him to fullback, which allowed Rod Coleman to move into the tight end slot for NBA. Even two minutes left in the first half. Green, a long cross-field throw is incomplete. Well, I tell you, he had to throw that ball a long way to get to Thomas Lewis. Yeah, in college football, with the hash marks uh, where they are, when you throw the out pattern to the wide side, you have got to have a gun arm. Trent Green is a very good intermediate thrower. I mean, he's had some real success this year doing that. Now, Indiana up by 10 points, a minute 54 remaining. They have two timeouts uh, going here, which, you, which I'd like to do. The big play receiver has been Thomas Lewis this year. Get the ball to Lewis or Eddie Thomas, one of those receivers on the move, running away, a crossing pattern, running away from a defender. Eddie Thomas is number seven. Thomas Lewis is number eight. And Green with a straight drop back is flushed out of the pocket. Has to just pooch it off to Dunbar, who makes his way up to the 44-yard line oh, of Baylor. That's, that's, that's a terrific play, though, by Dunbar and by Trent Green. You know, some guys just have a feel for the game of football. And Vaughn Dunbar is one of those guys. Now, he, he's in the backfield blocking right now. He is picking up linebackers, helping out. He sees his quarterback in trouble, finds a little open area, and makes a nice little catch. He's 29th of the year. But, like I said, some guys who are blessed in, one, in some ways don't necessarily have a, a feel for the game. Vaughn Dunbar does. Four plays, all passes so far in this drive as Thomas and Lewis split out wide to the right. And Green's looking for one of the two of them, and he is stripped of the football. It is loose. And it'll belong to Indiana. Well, I think it was Albert Fontenot. Fontenot. Fontenot, who almost went to Colorado, and now Indiana calls a timeout. They have one timeout remaining, but with 116, they do have the football. 10-0, Indiana. We're still in the first half. in white, Albert Fontenot. He's the defensive end for Baylor who causes the fumble there by Trent Green. Green makes the recovery, but it counts as a 10-yard sack. But the thing about Fontenot is he was pretty well blocked there, but he just kind of reached that paw out there to make the uh, to cause the fumble. That's, that's a nice play by Fontenot. Just has that real feel for the game when he gets around the quarterback. Are you going to hit me again? Be careful. <laughs> 
you're posting me up. <laughs> I can't post up Doug Collins, but I can't post you up. Yeah, that's true. Most people can. <laughs> Second and 20. Now, Baylor able to come up with a big play defensively. They had a plus 15 margin of takeaways during the regular season. They need the big defensive effort right now. Green flushed out of the pocket, takes a step up, throws over the middle, it is complete. Down to the 35-yard line to Scott McGowan. The junior out of Indianapolis, Indiana, Ben Davis High School, a pickup of 18. Ken, he's got two timeouts left. As you see, 56 seconds remaining. The key thing here is I believe it's going to be third and short. He's got to get the first sure. down. Sometimes quarterbacks get so excited about uh, uh, the two-minute drills, they forget on third down. Make sure you get the first down right. with, the, with the run if you have to. Third and two, the clock is running in the first half. Dunbar, a big hole. He scampers over to the left side. He's down to the 20 and run out of bounds. Down to the 19-yard line goes Vaughn Dunbar. Keith Caldwell pushes him out after a 16-yard pickup. If Vaughn Dunbar, though, gets a good block by number one at the bottom of the screen, Scott McGowan, he scores. Now, he makes some people miss here, but see, McGowan misses his block. That forces Dunbar too far out. A remarkable run there because he should have been tackled after about a four-yard gain, so he can make people miss. We saw him big runs, tough runs, run over people run out and outrun people. He has 76 yards. He came into the game needing 95 to break Anthony Thompson's single season rushing record at Indiana. Importantly, too, I think it stopped the clock for the Hoosiers. Green back to pass. Rifles the ball down to the five yard line and McGowan comes up with a catch at the shoe tops. So Baylor, who gave up only five touchdowns in the last 17 quarters coming into the game is close to giving up their second tonight. You know, this Indiana team looks like they're having some fun. Oh, yeah. It looks like they're enjoying themselves in a bowl game. Well, Mallory said our team was down a lot, but we get after it. Green goes for the end zone. Incomplete intended for Lewis. Had him, and it was a good throw. Clifford Ellison on the coverage. Clock stops at 17 seconds. Well, when you run the fade route and you have this much room, and in college football you do because of where the hash marks are, the wide receiver has an awful lot of territory to fade away from the defender. He had Clifford Ellison, who was injured, wasn't sure he was going to be able to play tonight, but he probably should have caught that ball, Thomas Lewis. But a good call, good touch throw by Trent Green. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Indiana said they needed to throw the ball in order to win this evening. They are throwing it, and they are running it. As Eddie Thomas splits out wide to the right. Second and five, 17 seconds left in the first half. The draw to Dunbar. He kicks to the left side. Painted Indiana. Oh, oh. This guy is for real. Von Dunbar has made virtually every kind of run and a lot of moves tonight. I'll tell you, number 77, Phil Trinter, the big 6'6", 285-pound senior out of Lorain, Ohio, came up with a really big block for Dunbar. Yeah, you're right, he did. But remember, making moves in a small area. And then Ooh. he outruns people. You're right, he did make a, a nice block. But boy, I'll tell you, oh, he, he's, he, he's given you virtually everything. But he's been tough, too. Tough to uh, bring down. He's got those happy feet. 80-play drive, 10 plays. Bennell will try to put a little icing on a cake. Oh, my. Almost blocked, but it is good. And with 12 seconds remaining to be played in the first half, Indiana showing a little offensive punch. They lead the Baylor Bears 17 to nothing. Trent Green threw seven times in that drive, but this was the big play. Yeah, another night at the improv here for Von <laughs> Dunbar because this play is supposed to go right here. Now, the left tackle does a great job of closing it down. Dunbar comes in here and bounces it outside, which he's done this night. We talked about eyes, vision. It, it, it's a feel thing as much as, as a th see thing. And you're right, uh, Phil Trenter, number 77, picks up a big block, and he has the speed, the burst, to be able to take advantage of that. And we see Von Dunbar only 14 yards away from a new Indiana single season rushing record. And he's only one game away from entering the National Football League and becoming first national Dunbar. Yeah, you know, what all I've liked about Dunbar, though, is, is he's earned his uh, yards at Indiana. I mean, he was highly recruited, actually had to go to J.C., came to Indiana, redshirted for a year behind Anthony Thompson, mm -hmm. played on the scout team, and then had the 1,200-yard season last year. Again, 
Uh, this is a guy that, that's worked awfully hard. He comes to practice every day. He plays every Saturday. He plays hard every play, and he deserves everything he's gotten this year. He was a JUCO All-American at Northeastern Oklahoma A&M. And he went to Indiana because he said while he was at junior college, the Indiana coaches stayed with him. A little pooch kick by Bunnell. It'll be short, picked up at about the 28-yard line, crossing over to the 32-yard line for Baylor with just eight seconds left. Bradford Lewis, a fullback. Well, it's going to be a, a tough halftime, I think, for Grant Taft. He's down by 17 points. The Veer is traditionally not a great uh, uh, comeback from behind team, although Craig Sager was saying he's had teams that have been very good at coming from behind, but it's going to be up to that man, JoJo, uh, J.J. Joe, to come up with some big plays, I think, in the passing game, the second half for Baylor to get back into it. Well, Chuck Reedy, the offensive coordinator, has to come up with some big plan for the second half. Just a reminder, coming up at halftime is our Aflac College halftime report with Craig Sager and the miracle on the Brazos, as Frank Fallon, longtime Baylor radio announcer, would call it. Joe steps up in the pocket, and he is going to be dropped for a loss. That is the second sack as Matt Bamba, number 99, blows in for the sack. As we end the second quarter to the cheers of the Indiana Hoosiers. They will go to the locker room after the first half of play at the Copper Bowl, leading the Bears of Baylor 17 to nothing. Bill Mallory is with Craig Sager now. Well, thank you, Ron. 17 to nothing, an excellent first half. You're having fun out here. Well, yeah, but uh, we got 30 minutes to play, and we stunk against Purdue, so we better have him pull that trick this time around. What about the fact they came out passing so much? Did that surprise well, you? Well, no, that's what we wanted to do, mix it up and, uh, you know, uh, again, be consistent. There are some passes we should have had, some passes we should have caught there, and we had a couple breakdowns on protection. Again, uh, you know, we shouldn't have that. So, again, there's things we've got to do better in the second half, but I'm pleased to get off to a good start. Up 17 nothing, but you still have a chance to yell them at halftime. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll be in there getting with it. <laughs> okay, 17 to nothing to score at the halftime. The Athletic College Halftime Report will be coming up in a moment as we continue our coverage of the Copper Bowl from Tucson, Arizona. We got defense. Von Dunbar, I mean, 84 yards, but the defense, I think Indiana really set the table for the offense at 17 points. And exactly that is Indiana did just about everything they wanted to do in some of the first half highlights. We showed just how aggressive this Indiana team could be, and yeah. it started off with a fake field goal by Baylor. Yeah, you know, Baylor had the one chance to uh, get the ball in the end zone. Now, you say, hey, maybe Grant Taft shouldn't have done this. No, he should have. It was a perfect call. They had the defense fooled, and they just couldn't execute it because the uh, holder was wide open. It should have been a touchdown there. We talked about Indiana Indiana's defense. These guys play well. 47 Hagen in the red jersey. You're going to see him. We've talked about his senior season. This game means a lot to him. He said it's going to be tough for me to give this game up, and you see why. This is a guy who plays with passion. Now, the offensive star, you mentioned Trent Green, but the real one has been Vaughn Dunbar. I, mean, I have been incredibly impressed with this guy, and he certainly came in highly touted. All the uh, accolades, I think, are appropriate. He can run over people through them and uh, hurdle them as well when it calls for it. So he's been impressive. He has been exactly what we thought he would be. So quickly in the second half, what does Baylor have to do? Well, you know, Baylor, I think they're going to have to start it defensively. Their defense is going to have to set their offense up. This is not a great catch-up offense, so I think their defense is going to have to cause a couple of turnovers. Indiana didn't have any in the first half. And also, Baylor might need the big play. And if you're a Baylor fan, don't we forget, Baylor got 21 points in the fourth quarter against Texas as they beat the Longhorns in Austin. But right now, they're down 17 to nothing. This has been the Aflac College Halftime Report. Coming up, second half of Baylor now. 
Well, thank you, Ryan. That first half was all Indiana. The Hoosiers get the ball to start in over Baylor, but they played uh, on the two touchdown drives. They played with a short field, and their defense set it up. And, and uh, uh, J.J. Joe's defense, the Baylor defense, is going to have to set it up here. You know, the one halftime stat we didn't have there was the number of slices of pizza, the Domino's pizza that you had at halftime. I think you may have set an all-time record. That's six. <laughs> There's a little pepperoni there on the uh, I've side I've got here. it. I'll tell you what, I was trying to, I was hoping you'd keep going with those stats because I wasn't <laughs> done yet. <laughs> Man, yeah. You're never finished. Uh, that's right. Well, that <laughs> halftime show was 30 minutes or less in uh, honor of Domino's pizza as J.J. Joe, 6 of 16 for 81 yards in that first half and second half action is underway and it'll be Thomas Lewis taking it right at the goal line ends up the middle cuts over to the 25 and he is going to be swarmed over at the 27 yard line a 27 yard return Ronnie here is where Santana Dotson Marcus Slow Robin Jones Lachey Maston the defensive players for Baylor have to make this happen because they have to force the turnover, you know, a, a negative plays. You know, big plays don't have to be 50-yard touchdown passes that Grant Tack was talking about. Big plays come on defense by shutting them out three and out, right. forcing them to punt after uh, three plays, causing that fumble, picking the ball off. And Trent Green, as we mentioned, set a Indiana single-season passing record in that first half, and he'll go to the air to begin the second. Over the middle, it is a good defensive effort by Baylor. Pass knocked down at about the 37-yard line intended for Rod Coleman. And a Baylor player is down, and it is Brian Hand who also got a piece of the ball. Yeah, that was good coverage by Brian Hand. I got to tell you, he was covering the tight end all the way across the field. Now, Brian Hand is an outside linebacker, and he looks like a strong safety because he was. He's tall, and he's lanky. He's 6'4", 196 pounds. The kind of guy you look at and you say, let's, let's run at him. But people uh, have been shut out most of this year on Brian Hand, particularly in the passing game, because he can cover tight ends all over the field as he did there. Brian Hand will trot off the field. He looks in pretty good shape. Second down and 10. 27-yard line for Indiana. 14-45 remaining to be played in the third quarter. On a split out wide to the right. Quick cadence to Dunbar. He's got a lot of open field across the 35, across the 40 to the 47, but we have a penalty flag down. He gets to the outside fast. Say, he, he gave you his best Heisman move, quite honestly. There, You see the straight arm? We didn't see the straight arm in the first half. We saw everything else. And I think the penalty, it is holding against Indiana. Again, what, what Von Dunbar does is make a lot and a, a very little. You see the straight arm there? And, and Dotson, number 77 for Baylor, he's the guy we said it has to start it off on this drive. He is their key defender. Good job of blocking up front early by Newton, number 60, the guard. And then Dunbar just runs right through the arm tackle of Dotson. That's so the first Indiana penalty, Pat. Yeah, they, you know, they're a well-coached team. Bill Mallory has done a very good job. We talked about the four tough losses on the road. Remember, he, he recruits in the state of Indiana, which really has about 4 million people. So he has to go to Illinois and Ohio, recruit some players like that. He says, hey, the high school football in Indiana is very, very good, and I think I can win with the guys I have. He was emphatic saying that, too. He was very emphatic saying about Indiana football players. Well, you go back to your main man, and the turf goes from underneath them at the 17-yard line. And Lee Bruder was there for the partial stop, loss of a yard. That brings up a third down and 21. Vaughn Dunbar, 100 yards, 10 of 11 games this year. And Santana Dotson haven't heard much from him, probably because he's getting double teamed again. Yeah, well, clearly the, the offensive game plan for George Ballou, he's the offensive coordinator for Indiana, is make sure that Santana Dotson is not going to stop us there. And they're using two men. Somebody else has to respond to the Baylor defense. Green back to pass, a lot of time, great protection, and he throws it off into the Baylor bench, incomplete. Scott McGowan, the intended receiver, and that'll force Indiana into a punting situation. Now you're Grant Taft, you push him back because of the penalty, yeah. you're gonna get good field position, however, Indiana is punting with the win. Yeah, well, but, but your defense did the job. Exactly. You know, your defense did the job. Now he's got 10 men up at the line, he, he may, you know, come after him, maybe the special teams can come up with a play. They feel like they can block a punt, the Julio average 35 yards a punt. 
Only had one block during the season, and he's able to get a line drive away. Frankie Smith fields it over his head at the 28. Oh, he is up and it looked like his own guy at the 39-yard line. <laughs> Troy Newton is there. It was Ray Matthews, one of their the real best special teams player for Baylor that really upended him. 56-yard punt, an 11-yard return. Baylor takes over, first and 10. Ball on their own 40. First half possessions for Baylor. Well, we looked at that a little bit earlier, and it's not pretty. It's uh, it's rather ugly, quite honestly. And and, and the di defense, though, I mean, uh, the difference, I think, in the, in the game and the score has been that Indiana's defense has set up two touchdowns, whereas the Baylor defense, really, for the first time tonight, has given their offense a reasonable field position to, to do something with. Joe fakes the option, goes for the big bomb, and it'll be knocked down incomplete as... Mose Richardson intended for Melvin Bonner. Richardson got a hand on it. Another well, look at it. That's a score if J.J. Joe can get the ball to the inside because Bonner had the defensive back Richardson beaten. You see how he had to slow down? He had him in perfect shape. He had him to his outside shoulder. He's got the whole middle of the field to work because the free safety is, is up on, the, uh, on a play action. And all J.J. Joe has to do is lead him a little bit more over the middle, and that's a big play for Melvin Bonner. Six passes on first down for the Baylor Bears. They've only completed one. Busted up the middle with straight as he crosses the 40 down to about the 43-yard line. Now, at halftime, we heard Bill Mallory said, well, yeah, it's all great, but at Purdue, we stunk. To mention Purdue, <laughs> the fact that Indiana was up 24-6 to six in that ball game, and they only won 24-2, to two, so that's what Bill yeah. was making mention of. Uh, you know, that, the glass is a half-empty, I guess. His team played, <laughs> I thought, played awfully well. Have you ever seen a coach, though, say, boy, I tell you, we're really kicking yeah, our little hineys, Yeah, right? exactly right. No, the second half is going to be more of it. Uh, I'd love to see a coach be honest and say that once, you know? I tell you, at 9.30 last night, Bill Mallory had his team walking through plays in the lobby of the hotel, which I yeah. thought was interesting. You had the game face on. Third and eight. On the draw, it is Mims. Has a big hole. Crosses the 45 down to the 40-yard line. First and 10 for the Bears of Baylor, a pickup of 18. Well, that's the big play that Grant Taff was talking about to Craig Sager. And it starts with offensive lines. Uh, number 72, Turnbaugh, the left tackle. You see the center. Uh, and the left guard uh, do a sensational job. It was David Leakes, the right guard, who created part of the hole there. So that's what I mean. Guards and tackles and tight ends cause or create big plays, too, by blocking somebody, and it gives guys like David Mims a chance to, for big runs. Straight is met by everybody on Indiana's front four. Gets up to the 40-yard line, pick up about a half a yard. Greg Farrell is the first one to make the big hit. You see number 93 there in red, too. That's Hervin McCormick, sophomore out of Brooklyn, New York. And Bill Mallory thinks that uh, there he is, number 93. Has a chance of being the best defensive lineman that he has ever had. And he's got everything that you look for in defensive line. Clearly the size, 6'4", 260. Oh, yeah. He can run sideline to sideline. He can rush a passer, and he plays hard every day down. 17-0, 11-35, left in the third. Ball oh, is going to be hit. The ball is loose. Baylor gets a hold of it. Back to the 46-yard line. What a hit by Larry McDaniel, number 97, the senior out of St. Louis, Missouri. Again, we, we said it's a night of seniors, particularly those who are not going to be playing in the National Football League, and Larry McDaniel is one of those seniors, and he just gets off the ball perfectly. It was a nose tackle a year ago in a 34 defense. Now he's playing as a regular tackle, plays with leverage, gets underneath people, scrambles around, and you see the kind of year that he has had. Covered by David Leakes making his first start, and it's third and 16, ball on the 46 for the Bears. Joe's going to have to go upstairs with it. Over the middle, almost intercepted by Mark Hagan. It hit the senior right in the hands. Well, Bill Mallory has called Mark Hagan the hub of our defense. And Hagan slaps his helmet. He knew he should have had it. But you see how the way he was just reading the quarterback, Joe? Again, they had him lined up as a middle linebacker there. He, a year ago, he played inside. Now he's playing outside. But on that particular down, he played as a middle linebacker, just read the eyes of J.J. Joe. Brentham back to, pa back to punt again. High snap. Whoa. Here comes Indiana. No penalty. Didn't get a piece of it, and it's going to be a short kick. It's a Baylor bounce. Down to the 14, down to the 13, down to the 12. Sold. 
you do that 11. well. You do that very well. I've got a future. 33-yard yeah. <laughs> punt, no return. 10:36 remaining to be played in the third quarter. The Hoosiers still have it over Baylor, 17-0. The third annual Domino's Pizza Copper Bowl live from Tucson in Indiana, 17 to nothing. That is what they led at halftime. And they have the football, first and 10 on their own 12. They have been very efficient offensively. Trent Green changing the signals at the line. Change the signal, same play. Dunbar is smacked hard at the 10 by Brian Hand. Also, Marcus Lowe, number 95, there to say hello to Mr. Dunbar. You know, Brian Hand has had a pretty productive uh, evening. Remember, we saw him covering the tight end a couple of plays ago, mm -hmm. knocking the, the ball away from a pretty well-thrown pass. And there on first down, the run, he goes up and stuffs the run. So he's been able to play well on third downs and passing situations in the running downs, too. Last two carries, Vaughn Dunbar has picked up losses. We're going to try him again. How about three in a row, able to pick up a couple of yards on the play. 9.55 remaining to be played in the third quarter, and we are live at Arizona Stadium in Tucson, Arizona for the Domino's Pizza Copper Bowl. Right now, Indiana leads 17 to nothing, along with Craig Sager and Pat Hayden. I'm Ron Thulin. Glad to be with us this New Year's Eve night as we're set to bring in 1992, and it is going to be an exciting one on Turner Broadcasting. Well, you know, I think uh, I expected this to be a closer football game, quite honestly, and as we've talked about, the, the difference to me has been Indiana's defense mm -hmm. really setting the table for Vaughn Dunbar and Trent Green. Green back to pass. Boy, is that a At throw. the 20, he throws it on a row, complete to Eddie Beatty. Beatty is driven back, but they'll put it up to the 20, and it'll be short of the first down. Boy, he did. He well, had a little he, mustard on yeah, that. Yeah, that, that was a major league throw by Trent Green. But the defense, the Baylor defense now twice, two series, they forced the punt by Indiana. They came after the punter last time, and they've got 10 men up on the line again. Frankie Smith is back. He is back at about the 43-yard line as DeGiulio goes back. 10 men on the line of scrimmage for Baylor. And they back off. And he boots the daylights out of this. Down to the 31-yard line. Smith looking for some running room, shaking and baking and no place to go. 49-yard punt, a four-yard return. 8.30 remaining in the third. Indiana still leads it. 17-zip. We'll be back. A lot of weight with Ned Simon, our producer, <laughs> whose wife's expecting a baby any minute because they want to show me, first of all, with my glasses on, and second of all, eating my third piece yeah. of pizza. This, this is nice. Now, did you order it with the anchovies? No, 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 no. Well, they no. look like eyebrows. You I'm, from, those, yeah. I'm from Pittsburgh. We that just have is pepperoni. Nice. Third piece, and you got a little bit right in between your teeth there, too. <laughs> Well done on the pepperoni. My wife has always wanted Weed America to wear my glasses on the ears, but she's probably asleep back in Atlanta already. 17 0, 8 30 remaining to be played in the third. And on first and 10 on the 35, John Henry gets the call. And coming up next on TBS after tonight's ball game, the movie Cooley High, starring Garrett Morris, a personal friend of Pat Hayden. That's coming up next on TBS. So spend your New Year's Eve watching Cooley High on TBS. Well, you have big plans for 1992 or the rest of New Year's Eve, I assume, Ron, right? <laughs> uh, get ready for Detroit and Dallas NBA action on Friday in Dallas. Mm. Start getting back to work. You really know how to have a good time. I'm a party animal. J.J. Jones pitching it back to Mims. Finds a little bit of running room. Crosses the 40 down to the 42-yard line. Okay, again, Baylor down 17 points. 7.44 remaining in the third quarter here. They need that big play. They need someone to step forward. Grant Taft needs his, uh, one of his wide receivers. That's Lee Miles there, who's been a big play guy for them this year. Or it's David Mims the, uh, on the outside with a play. We haven't seen J.J. Joe, the option quarterback, really keep the ball much and, and get himself into a little bit of a scene. But somebody has to step forward. You know, on this drive, I believe, that Baylor's going to have a chance. I'm not sure Baylor was really ever shut down in the regular season. They're 5 of 11 on third down conversions right now, and Baylor has to call a timeout because if not, they were going to be penalized with 7-11 remaining in the third quarter, 17 to nothing. Indiana on top is... The Indiana defense has played extremely well. Now let's take a look at tonight's Silver Bullet scoreboard. A couple of bowl games scored. Eight straight bowl victories. Congratulations to Terry. 
Here comes a little trick play. Mims looking to throw back to Joe, and he is going to be smothered back at the 34-yard line. Mark Hagan is there again for the tackle, a loss of seven. And, Pat, you and I saw that coming. That did not develop the way it was drawn up. Well, well this has been a very disciplined Indiana defense. Now, now watch. Indiana, the, the, one of the guys on the left part of the screen sensed that there was going to be a throwback. I mean, he, he just took that away. Good penetration. And then one more time, it's Mark Hagan cleaning up. The left hand of the screen, somebody's not fooled over there. It looks like a pass all the way. Should have made it look a little bit more like a run. Good penetration there by Beauchamp. And Hagen, as he's done most of this evening, kind of cleaning up. And the guy that uh, Mallory has thought so highly of, Mark Hagen, over the years. And Mims is down on the field. He is hurt as Baylor faces a fourth down and 11. 6.47 left to be played in the third. Indiana has control of the game right now. They lead at 17 0. We'll be back. Able to walk off the field holding his left or right wrist, and I think he thought it was a late hit pad. Yes, and some of the Baylor coaches were complaining that, uh, too. You'll see Hagen, number 47, get a shot at him. And then 97, late in the picture, McDaniel. I don't know. I mean, I, I think you, tough. you could probably call it either way, but but uh, we heard, certainly hope that David Mims is able to get back in the ball game. The members on Mims so far this evening, and back to Pat. Punt again, and it's Kent Bretham and Scott McGowan back to receive. He's putting into the wind, stands on his own 20. Here comes Indiana again. Boy, they are extremely close to blocking one. It is a short kick. Little backspin on it, stopped at the 35-yard line where Indiana starts off again after the 30-yard punt. You know, but that, that punt block, again, shows you how disciplined and well-coached I think this Indiana team is. You're right, they have come after Brentham the punter every time but but watch how if, if they can't get it how many times you've seen guys run into the punter knowing they can't get it these guys back off these Indiana rushers again I think it's just a sign of guys who are uh, very disciplined well coached you see everybody is avoiding the punter that's a, a good punt rush Green a great fake he's going for all the money and it is uh, incomplete right. just off the fingertips of My. Thomas Lewis. He almost had that. What a wonderful fake, though. <laughs> oh, he had everybody. Green. Absolutely. There's a few things laying on the field that he faked guys out of. Yeah, and, and he let this ball hum. I mean, that, that is a very, very good throw. He, he had the whole center of the field to work with, threw it away from the defender. Uh, Thomas Lewis adjusted to it, nearly, nearly uh, makes the catch there. Started with good offensive line protection, a ball he should have had. He's caught a lot of those this year, has Thomas Lewis. Add, added really the deep threat to the Indiana passing game. Frankie Smith was on the coverage. Second and 10, ball on the 35. Dunbar hit hard, and he will be dropped at about the 34-yard line. Let's go down to the field and our Craig Sager. Craig? Well, thank you, Ron. What happened to David Nims is he hurt his elbow. What happens to the nerve on it? They're working on him right now. They hopefully will have him back in the game. But another change has been made. They've taken the freshman out of the ball game. David Leakes, they feel that he's been getting beat repeatedly, so they moved Greg Bellamy over to the tackle position, and Matt Gant is now starting as well. So they're, they've kind of been disappointed in the job they've been seeing from David Leakes. Well, that's when you talk about the mouth is dry, the eyes are glazed over, and the young man's had some problems, but he's going to be a good one for the Bears. <sighs> Nobody there to get the Trent Green pass, and that'll force Indiana into a fourth down and 11 situation, just over 535 left. Give this Baylor team some credit. This defensive team have done everything they've asked exactly. of them. You know, Vaughn Dunbar in the second half, four carries, minus one yards. They forced three punts. It's the offense now that has to come up with a play. Jim, Jim Julio back to punt. Frankie Jim, Smith. Jim I'll who? get it out. Jim who? It's that pizza. <laughs> you eat pizza, you can't talk Italian. <laughs> nice spiral. That'll drive Smith all the way back to the 15 yard line, back to the 13, and he'll start from there. Up to the 22 yard line, a 52 yard punt, eight on the return. 5.27 left to be played in the third. Indiana still on top, 17 0. Most Pizza Copper Bowl game summary. First of all, Indiana went on top 7-0 as Trent Green took it in from 12 or from a yard out. And then Scott Bunnell connected on a 27-yard field goal 
And it was 10-0 in intermission, or at uh, near the end of the second quarter, then Dunbar, Vaughn Dunbar's five-yard run made it 17-0. That is where we are now, is Robert straight up to the 26-yard line. How many times in, in when you watch Veer or option teams do you see a big play on, on the perimeter of the defense? And in college football, a lot of that happens. Yeah. Baylor 25 points, maybe 26 a game, zero right now. And it was a difference between their five-game win streak and the yeah. games that they lost. You're a right. major difference. Straight 11 carries, 54 yards right now. It really hasn't opened things up. It is Kendrick Bell, number 28. 5'9", well, freshman out of Tyler, Texas. You know, Ron, the, the option play is designed to be able to get, you know, speed people on the corner of the defense, the perimeter of the defense, where, where in college football, unlike professional football, that's where the plays happen. That's where the big gainers come, quite honestly, because of where uh, the hash marks are. But the uh, Indiana defense has taken that away all evening, and Baylor hasn't had any mm -hmm. big plays on the outside. Well, Scott Barron is their big fiery leader for the offensive line for the Baylor Bears. They've played four years together. They need to get something going right now. As straight crosses the 30-yard line. Close to the first down is going to be short. And he's going to have to go for it, I believe. I think we have a penalty on the play. Oh. And it was a late one. May have been a face mask. And we're going to see. There it is. Referee Dick Burleson, the officials tonight from the SEC. Had a shot at the late, late uh, face mask on Robert Strait. There it, it is. is. Kind of like Randy White putting his thumb in your, uh, yeah. or your thumb, thumb in his, his ear. ear. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's awfully uh, accurate, I yeah. was. 15 yard face mask penalty against the defense, first down. Well, the umpire tonight is James Mosteller, and we'd like to say best of luck to James because after 24 years of officiating following tonight's game, he is retiring from wearing the stripes, and we wish him nothing but the best. At the Baylor 46 yard line. Well, that jersey tells you a little bit about yeah. what Baylor has done tonight. First and 10, ball on the 46. Joe. In the flat, he has Lee Miles at the 40 up to the 38-yard line. A pickup of 16 on the play. Bones Richardson on the tackle. Now, that was a well-designed and well-thrown ball by J.J. Joe. And, and watch Lee Miles as he come back, uh, comes back to the ball. Now, he's running the hook route, which is good for a first down. But if you get a guy like Lee Miles on a crossing route where he's running and catch the ball on the move in full stride, you have a chance mm -hmm. of maybe a touchdown. Well, Lee Miles at 5'6", 158 pounds, is the fastest Baylor Bear from point to point. Joe's going to have to put it up again, and he airs it off the far side, and it is complete once again down to the 32-yard line of Reggie Miller. A pickup of seven. And we talked about Bill Mallory having recruit in a lot of states. Grant Taft, on the other hand, recruits only in Texas. All of his players come from the state of Texas. He built a beautiful facility. Uh, down there is helping him to recruit some of the top players in the state. He said that's what we have to get to be able to really compete and compete for a national championship. We need to get more of the top 10 players in Texas. This facilities will help now. Pitch back back to Mims. He's got some running room in the first down. Crosses the 15 and they'll mark it at about the 18 yard line. A first down for the Bears and with 258 left in the third quarter. They are beginning to make some move as Watson Hagen there for the hit. Yeah, and, and just like Indiana, the defense, Baylor's defense, set it up for Grant Taft. The defense member forced three punts in this half by Indiana. This is the first time the offense has been able to do something with it. And they've had some nice mix. They've had a couple of, that was an option play on the outside. They've run Robert straight inside and they threw the one pass to Lee Miles. Mims eight carries 45 yards. Kendrick Bell into the lineup. Mims will take a breather. Man in motion. They hand it up the straight right up the middle down to the 15-yard line. John Miller is there for the hit. Eight on the uh, carry. 13 carries for 64 yards now for Big Robert Strait. Well, this is a critical drive here for Baylor because if they can get it in, the fourth quarter could be very, very interesting because Grant Tabs, we are, we're a fourth quarter team. We can keep it close. We, we will wear you down because we're going to keep running at you. Well, the first and third quarters for Baylor usually have been the biggest. And they have been the worst for Indiana. Is this time Strait takes it down to the 10-yard line and Jim Summerall, with the help of John Miller, make the hit. Well, Craig Sager reported on the uh, changes in the offensive line that Grant Taft did. Obviously, they are working. Big block by the left tackle, Adam Arroyo, who's played well tonight. 
And again, uh, J Robert Strait, the thing about him is he's going to bounce off some people. I mean, oh, yes. he, he, he's hard to tackle high. You've got to get him down low, and you've got to get some help. First and 10, Baylor. The ball is on the 10. Up the middle, Larry McDaniel finally corralling straight down about the six yard line. Okay, Again, four yard. Brought down by number 45, Greg Farrell. Grant Taff, uh, as you see with the headphones on, he's uh, listening to his coaches, Cotton Davidson, up, up uh, in the booth. He'll uh, then send in the play, not signal it in with one of his players. What about Chuck Reedy, the offensive coordinator, who's been there two years, came from Clemson University in 1989. Baylor only had 1,000 yards rushing. This year they had over 2,600 yards rushing in the new Veer offense. Pitch back to oh, Kendrick man. Bell. Big hit. Baylor needs to score on this series, no question about it, but Bell was stacked up by Larry McDaniel and Mike Middleton bringing up yeah. a third and six situation. Somebody came up from the defensive backfield, I think, maybe it was Middleton, that really put the hit on Mims. Kaboom. No, it, no it, was, it was a middle linebacker, Paul Williams, number 29. Now that's how you make a tackle right. if you're a middle linebacker. He, he played like a middle linebacker on that one. And now a timeout's gonna have to be called as Indiana had 12 men on the field. So that'll be Indiana's uh, first time out used in the quarter with an even one minute left to be played in the third. Well, third and five. Now, you figure Grant Taft's got to figure, hey, I'm going to maybe look at two plays here. They had some success with an option play, and I'd like to see it come back right here with the option to the wide side of the field. Well, the NBA action will continue on our sister station, TNT, on Friday night. Okay. Yeah, close second. Uh, have to say the Laker girls, obviously. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh, you mean the teams. Teams, teams. Uh -oh. Well, you have to go with the Bulls. Playing extremely well right now. Boy, John Paxson took a forearm from yeah, Chuck Yeah, saw that last Ooh, night. Man. That hurt, but I like them. And I tell you what, Cleveland coming up on uh, January 14th on TNT. Say they're a good basketball team right now. Okay, wide side of the field, I think, is where Barlow wants to go. Then the ball's on the left hash, an option play out to the wide side of the field. Henry and Kendrick Bell, the setbacks. They can get us first down by some six inches. Joe goes for the end zone. Incomplete oh, penalty. That'll be interference called on Indiana's Mose Richardson. The pass intended for Melvin Bonner. He had the step. There's was pretty good coverage there by Richardson, but, but Bonner, who is 6'3". Now, this is supposed to be like in basketball, a jump ball. When you have a 6'3 wide receiver, not a bad call. Off. Get it up, give him a chance, good throw. Ooh. We need to look at that again. Yeah, I'm not so sure on that one. Looked like pretty good coverage here by Richardson. He's right pushing, there. Yeah, he's pushing with the left Ten. hand, I think, is where they got him. Because at the end of the play, Richardson did a nice job. But earlier when the ball was coming down, he got the left hand and pushed Bonner. And that's a big break for Baylor, who's got to punch it in. First down automatically on the two-yard line for the Baylor Bears with 55 seconds remaining to be played. In the third quarter, straight as the fullback. He gets oh. the ball, he fumbles into the end zone, Indiana has it. Oh, my goodness. Against Texas, Texas Tech, Tech yeah. Baylor fumbled on the one-yard line. It was returned 99 yards. It cost them the win, and this time Damon Watts Comes up with the Robert Strait fumble. That's the first turnover of the game. I was thinking the exact same thing. Oh, yeah. Texas Tech ball game. My goodness, and that man has to be frustrated. A two-game bowl win streak had his second chance to put it in. They can't capitalize. And once again, the defense. Watch the penetration. There's the nose uh, tackle. That time Williams is down to the nose. A good lick on the ball carrier straight, and a lot of red jerseys around the ball. But goal line defense is about, is about penetration. It's about desire. You got that. It was an uneven exchange between J.J. Joe and Robert Strait. That's a big play. Well, on the mm. sideline there uh, during the replay, Grant Taff was telling Robert Strait, keep your hands on the ball like this man does. Dunbar up to the 24-yard line, a pickup of four, before Curtis Hafford and Michael McFarland put the hurt on. You know, that, that's another interesting point about Dunbar. He does not fumble the ball much. That's right. Here's a guy that, that takes a lot of hits, 31 carries a game he's averaging, uh, 1,600 or almost 1,700 yards this year, but doesn't turn the ball over. He is an all-purpose runner as the clock ticks down. Dunbar, 85 yards, five to three yards this half. And he is up to about the 29-yard line, and that should be the last play of the third quarter. 
Third down and about one yard to go as the final six seconds of the third quarter tick down. We have played 45 minutes in Tucson, Arizona. Baylor has had their chances, haven't capitalized, and they find themselves down by 17. That lights the way to our beautiful hotel, the Westin La Paloma, and uh, never seen anybody decorate that before. It's a long way we got way. there, yeah. That's, uh, that's right. That's Sawara cactus, as a matter of fact. I'm very impressed. You talked about the defense that Baylor had in that third quarter, 15 total yards for Iowa, no first downs. And right now, Baylor has all the numbers, first downs, total yards, but the big number they don't have, points. Fumble, Green tries to find the handle, finally does, falling out at about the 26-yard line. And once again, the Baylor defense able to hold, courtesy of the Trent Green bobble. Well, we've seen some exchange problems from Baylor. That one, uh, I don't know whether either Trent Green was pulling out too early or the center, Rod Carey, uh, was a short snap. One or the other, Indiana got a very good break, or lucky break for Green to be able to recover. John Martin, the deep snapper, and Jim DiGiulio is back. They go up a little bit for that one. Into the win, that is an excellent kick. Smith, back to the 27, finds a hole, crosses the 40, hit hard before going down. At the 42, a 51-yard punt into the win, a 19 Some return. Hitting going on. A couple of seconds into the fourth and final quarter, Baylor needs to get something going offensively. They trail by 17. Baylor scored 21 points in the fourth and final quarter against Texas, and they need every bit of that now. Trailing by 17. Joe fakes the handoff. He's getting pressure from behind, and he'll be sacked by Greg Farrell. The fourth sack on J.J. Joe this evening. Well, I'll tell you, Craig Farrell was a linebacker. They moved to defensive end. The Indiana has two good, quick outside pass rushers in Greg Farrell, Farrell and Charles Bochamp. Farrell just got on the corner very, very quickly, and J.J. And, uh, Joe had absolutely no chance. But Farrell has done a good job of getting upfield quickly and then taking the proper angle mm -hmm. to be able to get to the quarterback. It's a loss of nine. Farrell, three straight years, he's led Indiana in tackles. The handoff to Mims, a little bit of running room as he crosses the 35. And Mark Hagan had the hit, number 47. What a great young man he is. He's three back surgeries, and people thought he was a little bit crazy for playing football, but boy, he has a love for this game. Well, you know, you have the three back surgeries. You know it's your last game. He talked about it. And I think you have a greater appreciation for the game, realizing after the first back surgery, he thought he, maybe he would never play the game again. And, and he is passionate about this game. We talked about him playing since he's been in third grade. He loves football. And he's an academic award for Indiana. As J.J. Joe getting pressure again, forced out of the pocket. Completes the pass to number 83, Melvin Bonner. And we have a penalty flag on the play, and you would have to think that is holding, considering the scrambling by J.J. Joe. Let's take a look and see what the flag is all about. Ignore the flag. We'll do just that. Thank you for telling us that. But Hagen, who's majoring in marketing, wants to go into sports marketing, said, uh, listen, I know I can't pass an NFL physical. I just want to go ahead and get on with my career, go to a little graduate school. Yeah. He yeah, really has his uh, head screwed on straight. Oh. He, he, uh, he's uh, got a very interesting perspective about football, playing his last game, life. A real strong presence mm -hmm. about Mark Hagen. He looks like Craig James, former SMU running back. First and ten, ball on the 42, Baylor on the move again. Of course, they fumbled the last possession on the two. J.J. Joe throws in the flat, incomplete intended for Reggie Miller. We speak of Hagen. He's got his whole family here for his final collegiate game, and Craig Sager is with him now. Well, thank you, Ron. An adjustment, no doubt, from Mark Hagen. But how about the family that's been following him for 15 years? Father Phil, his mother Candy, and his sister Kelly. It's going to be tough on you when the cheering stops. Well, I think it'll probably be tougher on me than it will for Mark. It's been, uh, it's been a great career here at Indiana for him. My mother never wanted to see me play football. How about you? Are you going to be glad that he's going to be hanging up the spikes? Oh, I've enjoyed it, though. I mean, I, you know, I hate to see him hurt all the time. So I'm, and, and so I'm, I'm, you know, sorry to see it end, but I think his body needs a rest. No doubt the defense is doing their job tonight. And who knows, maybe you can go down to LSU and watch your, your daughter do her band concerts. But the defense's story so far tonight, Mark Hagan, of course, leading that group, has the big turnover right here. Ron? 
Well, John Miller, the senior out of Massillon, Ohio, who played for Washington High School, comes up with it. And in true fashion, Candy Hagen waited until the interception was over to finish her sentence. <laughs> yeah, she's going to take our I job. Like Very good timing. But, you know, we have seen this a couple of times tonight from John Miller. It just, just, just exceptionally good timing, whether it's uh, running down a play from the backside, leaping at the right moment to knock the play away, and that time, picking the ball off. Second Baylor turnover, none for Indiana, which is a big story in this ball game is Dunbar. Bowls his way over the 42-yard line. You know, you know, Craig Sager makes an interesting point look, looking at uh, Phil Hagen and uh, uh, Mark's father. A lot of parents get very wrapped up in these seniors. We talked about them being it's the last game, and these are big moments for parents as well, uh, following their kids through junior high and high school and then collegiately, and they, they know just as much as anybody else it's their last game, and it's been a wonderful time for them as well. Dunbar needs just three yards now to break Anthony Thompson's record. Green forced out of the pocket. Has a little bit of running room. He's got some speed over the 50 down to the 45-yard line. Goes Trent Green, brought down by Keith Caldwell. I really like the way Trent Green is playing. We've got tonight. a penalty, too. Really like the way. It may have been a face mask. But Trent Green was all smiles last night. Very calm and collected and, and uh, very comfortable about today's game. Felt very prepared. Fooling around with a backup quarterback, Chris Dyer. And he has played uh, pretty, pretty doggone well. First, first down of the half, and the penalty is going to go against Indiana. So they'll have to wait. That's for interesting. That first. That's right. And you talk about Dyer and Trent Green. It is amazing that a man that you compete against every day, and you were replaced by last year for four football games. And these two guys are very, very close friends. He says, "Listen, sometimes the coaches don't get the signals right. I got to look over the <laughs> sidelines. And Dyer's got to give me the signals." <laughs> you know, Chris straightens him out. <laughs> There he is. Chris will be back uh, next year. Again, what college football is about. Some a walk-on is Chris Dyer. Played real well last year in, in uh, replacing Trent Green. There we see Chris and the numbers on him from Lawrenceburg, Indiana, the junior. Penalty against Indiana. That'll nullify the play. And again, back up guys, no first out backup pass. guys like Chris Dyer, I, I think, were important for this Indiana team. He could have pouted about not getting the starting job, but didn't. And I think just by the nature of that, his attitude, I think, made this Indiana team a better football team. Second down and 10, 11.45 left in the game. 17-0. Indiana on top. Green goes to the air once again. Wide open, completes the pass. Oh, no. Finally, hog tied down at about the 28-yard line. And for a young man whose name on the back of his jersey is misspelled, that has to hurt you. The yeah. confidence is there as he hauls it down for a 31-yard gain. Uh, you, you're right. The, tra the trainer's going to be upset. But the, look at the top of the uh, screen, the pattern by McGowan. He's just going to run this square. He's up the top. He's going to run the square out, and then he makes the nice uh, uh, move after the catch. But a perfect throw by Trent Green. On one hash mark, takes a strong arm to do that. And then a scamper down the sidelines. Good play. McGowan out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Dunbar looking for those three yards, and he is going to lose a couple instead. Curtis Hafford and Robin Jones. And Robin Jones has been extremely quiet. We talked to Randy Schneider about blocking Robin Jones. He says, i got to really hold on to this guy to, so he doesn't get away. And he's been doing a very good job because it's probably Jones only his second tackle. Yeah, well, Robin Jones had a big year in the Southwest Conference. He, and as Grant Taft says about Robin, he's got a lot of want to. He wants to make plays, and he usually does. Minus five yards for Dunbar on that. He's down to 87 yards, so he needs eight more yards to break Anthony Thompson's record. And here he comes. He may get it on this play. Dunbar crosses the 25, and they're going to mark it right on the 25-yard line as Robin Jones, as we talk about him, gets the tackle. He does now have 95 yards. So for the moment, Vaughn Dunbar has tied Anthony Thompson's rushing record at Indiana. And quite an efficient runner is Vaughn Dunbar. No wasted motion. He runs with a purpose. Every move seems to set up something else that he's going to either do on that particular run or something else. I mean, I've been incredibly impressed with Von Dunbar. He has a lot more speed in person than he does on film. I mean, he's got a great right. burst. 1,783 yards this year for Von Dunbar. And he has all-purpose yards. He's a great kickoff returner. Nobody kicks to him anymore. Green, wide open, completes the pass to Eddie Thomas down to the 16-yard line. And Trent Green, I wasn't sure about his arm coming into the game, but the pickup of 13 yeah. once again was on a rope. You know, some guys catch the ball, others snatch it. Well, Eddie, Eddie Thomas snatches the ball. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and th this helps a quarterback when a, when a receiver goes up and catches the ball like this, rather than waiting for it to come into his body, they prevent interceptions. And that, that's a beautiful catch there by Eddie Thomas. Eddie Thomas, the psychology major at Indiana. First and 10, ball on the 16, 935. Left to be played in the ball game. Baylor's defense shut down Indiana in the third quarter, but the Hoosiers coming back here in the fourth. Dunbar over the right side, and there's a flag on the play as Dunbar slides his way down to the 10. Albert Fontenot with the tackle. Tracy Miller also got a hand on him. Let's see what the flag is all about as we're at the 9-17 mark of the fourth, and it is against Indiana, so we'll bring it back. And that brings Bill Mallory up off the bench, and he's out of the field along with some of his coaches wanting to find out exactly what's happening. He knows that Baylor does have that big play potential. They have four plays of 70 yards or better during the regular season. They can strike and strike quickly. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. I tell you though, they, they have not had the guys open in the passing game on the big plays thus far tonight. And, and give that Indiana defense some credit, particularly the, the free safety, Damon Watts, Damon Watts, excuse me, who has really not been fooled on play action, has stayed in deep center field and taken away some deep passes. Santana Dotson is taking a rest now for the Baylor defense, and Green goes back up to the air to Thomas. Gets down about the 17-yard line on the first down and 20 play as Frankie Smith is there to greet him. You, you like what you see in Trent Green. He's, he's playing with a smile on his face, which is you, which you love to see in any sport. So many of us take it too seriously. But Trent Green was, as we said, smiling last night, smiling now, and he has a, he has a lot to smile about. See, there's little bison on the back of their helmet for good hits, good plays. And... A long time ago, the Indiana Hoosiers used to have a bison as a mascot. And everybody in Indiana says, I'm not sure why we had a bison as a mascot. I was just going to ask you that. I didn't know. I couldn't find anybody who really knew why. Dunbar, the right side. Watch him go now. The engines are on as he bulls his way down to the seven-yard line. Boy, Michael McFarlane needed to tie his legs with a rope because Dunbar just keeps on churning. Pickup of 10, he has 105 yards for the game. Really unusual combination of speed and power. I mean, you first you're gonna see the burst right there, and the way he cuts, and then you're gonna see the power. As soon as he's, he's gonna get hit, you see how he just lowers the shoulder, picks up another four yards? I mean, that is a good combination, and the Indianapolis Colts, who have the first two picks in the draft, oh. I think are gonna have to take a good long look at Von Dunbar. The obvious joke there is poor guy, but I won't say that, okay? <laughs> I won't say that. <laughs> Santana Dotson again off to the side. Oh, Fred Green gets nailed at about the six-yard line by Lee Bruder from Klein, Texas, the 6'1 junior. Lee Bruder. Frankie, be ready to press. A gain of one on the play. Timeout. Should have a first down. They're going to measure it off with 728 left to be played in the ball game. 17 to nothing. It has been all Indiana. A lot of ball games, of course, coming up tomorrow as you plop in front of the television set with the sodas and the chips and it'll be a first down for indiana and trent green as he is leading the troops right now at this point of the ball game bill mallory one and three in bowls in the last four here at uh, indiana and you know a lot of coaches have different goals for bowl games and bill mallory was saying last night uh, clearly the one to win this game but he also used it as a like a second spring practice for his young players. Doing double days, they hit a lot back before they came out here to Arizona. And his young players really benefited from the bowl experience. No place to go. Dunbar down at the seven yard line. Second down. And goal to go with seven minutes left to be played in the contest. Talking about all those bowl games tomorrow. I think the Rose Bowl is probably yep. the most uh, marquee value i think it's going to be a very very interesting game slightly has nothing to do with the fact that you are busting out of here right after the game to catch a <laughs> flight back to la does it well i got the rules parade in the morning well you got I'm ryan's in here ryan's, and uh, yeah. we've run out of food here in the press box so ryan's got to get home to, <laughs> to find something else to eat i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> Down to the four-yard line. Indiana knocking on the door again as Santana Dotson comes up with the tackle, and we haven't said his name very much tonight. 
Brian Hand there to help out. Well, he has had a lot, a lot of red jerseys oh, in, his, in his defense. Santana Dotson has had at least two guys on him most of this evening. But the disappointing thing, I think some of the other people around him didn't rally too That's well. Right. If he's getting, if he's sucking up that many blocks, the linebackers probably should have made a lot more plays. Well, Baylor's offense was so potent. I think we're all surprised. Of course, the fumble and the uh, the real big turn in that first quarter when they faked the field goal had a wide open play, didn't get it. Can't able to score. Here comes Green on the bootleg. Green, who had 11 rushing touchdowns in the regular season, picks up a couple of more this evening. And did he get a good block by Scott McGowan? They may have misspelled his name on his jersey. You see the E-N there, it's A-N. But Scott McGowan threw a great block by Trent Green. Watch up here. Now, here's the play action fake, of course, and he's gonna come around, but watch the block at the top of the screen that really set up the touchdown. Yeah, when you get your wide receivers to block like this, a lot of good things can happen. Tell you, Trent Green, too, ran that one in like Boy, a fullback. He did. Green is 6'4", 215, so he's a big kid. And Bunnell adds the extra point with 555 left to be played in the ball game. The Hoosiers of Indiana have a shutout on their hands. They lead the Bears of Baylor at the Copper Bowl 24 to nothing. There's our score as Trent Green adds another six. Indiana goes up 24 to nothing. 5.55 left to be played in the contest. Another time-consuming drive, Pat. Yeah, very methodical on offense. You know, they've tried a couple big plays out of the passing game, and, and uh, they never got anything real far downfield, but very patient offensive team. They used Dunbar. They used their tight end. Scott McGowan had a, a big catch, a big block on the touchdown uh, run. So I'd say they've been a very efficient offensive football team tonight. Well, the last time Baylor was shut out as the kick goes into the end zone, they'll begin first and 20. It was 1990 when they played in Lincoln, Nebraska. They lost 13 0. A path they had a fumble on the one yard line in that ballgame. Yeah, and, and as you mentioned, at Texas Tech this, uh, this year as well. How about the bowl matchups? The Orange Bowl. Who do you like? We got a couple of ties for number one. You know, everybody likes Miami so much, and that's what scares me. You know, Nebraska's come into this game, the number one ranked team, so many times and not being able to get over the hump. Uh, you know, that's going to be an interesting, interesting matchup, I think, there. But the, the big one is the Rose Bowl, Washington and Michigan. I'm a West Coast guy, a Pac-10 guy, so I'll have to pick oh, Washington, Quite a little allegiance there, huh? Indiana players are really hoping for Michigan on that one. A.J. Joe's pass will fall incomplete in the hands of Reggie Miller. Now, Indiana's last shutout was a 31-0 game to Michigan State. This year is the fourth game. Sugar Bowl, season. good matchup there, Ron. Uh, Florida, Shane Matthews, the quarterback for Florida, has been injured, had a, an orthoscopic knee surgery, and that's still still not certain if and well uh, how well he'll be able to play. But I think if he does play, Notre Dame will have a tough time with that passing attack of Florida. And the Penn State-Tennessee game just oh, up like the that. road here. I like Tucson. that bowl. Joe runs out of the pocket, finally dumps it off, and it'll be incomplete. And once again, Indiana with really the no-name big defense keep coming at you as Paul Williams really putting the pressure on. And this is quite a redemption game for Indiana. They really felt, as you mentioned at the top of the show, that this was Bill Mallory's best season in eight years, had the talent. They were expecting a lot of big things, but that Michigan game, a controversial uh, game, got Bill Mallory suspended, but uh, they felt that really hurt this team. Well, you see that graphic here. Average yards to go on third down, 8.9 yards. That has been the difference in this football game. Their team needs to be in third and two. Right. Third and ten. Sort of like the wishbone team. You don't want to get in that type of offense. Pass will be complete to Mims. He has stopped at the 25, well short of the first down. We've talked to both coaches about a possible playoff. Do they like it? And both of them very emphatically said, no, keep the bowls. Although Grant Taft had an interesting uh, concept he would like to see happen. Yeah, he'd like to see after all the bowl games are over, choose the top two teams. And it would be by some coaches uh, mechanism that would choose the two teams most deserving to be play in a national championship. I actually don't disagree. I disagree with both these guys. I would love to see a national championship game. And I think all the reasons for not having one can be rebutted. Well, Kent Bretham had to go up high as he knocks away his sixth punt. Taken at the 40 by McGowan. Has some running room up to the 47-yard line. Goes Scott McGowan. 34-yard punt, eight on the return. 4.58 left to be played in the ball game. Indiana leading Baylor 24-0. We'll be back in a moment. 
scout team this year and have really put their licks in and lifted the weights along with the starters, getting them a little playing time in a bowl. And boy, that has to be a thrill for these young men. Hey, you, you don't realize it. I mean, I, I played at Southern Cal on, on, on two national championship teams, but it's the backup guys that really make you a good football team. Well, we talked about Dyer. He is in the ball game right now, as is Brett Law. And Law swung out to the far, to the near sideline. He's run out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. Because, Brian Hand is there for the stop. Because it is guys like Brett Law and Chris Dyer that, that give you give you the look, the picture of the opposing team that, that helps you prepare from week to week. And if you have a successful year, it usually means your scout teams, your, your backups, your walk-ons, all those guys are giving you the right picture to help that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what they call it a team, to help your, your team be a much better uh, team on Saturdays. Chris Dyer, the 6'2", 195-pound junior out of Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Second and five. The handoff to Law, the big hole over the left side, and Law able to get down to the 43-yard line. Talked about Vaughn Dunbar, and he is with our Craig Sager right now. Craig? Well, thank you, Ron. A great collegiate career coming to a close here tonight. Congratulations on a great game here this evening, Ron. Thank you. I appreciate it. The victory was real sweet, especially being a senior. It's great. From here, you go to the Hula Bowl, correct? Yes, I do. Uh, heading out to Hawaii in about four days. So I'm really looking forward to that, too. Looking back to your collegiate career, what's going to stand out? You think your big highlight, biggest moment? Uh, I would have to say uh, receiving an MVP award from my uh, fellow teammates. Uh, you know, that's that's real important to me, you know, that my uh, teammates accepted me like that and, uh, you know, thought well well enough for me to uh, give me that award. That, you know, that was my highlight of, this, uh, of uh, my career here. We talked to Dick Steinberg of the Jets at halftime about evaluating talent for the draft. Your statistics are there. Everything's there. He said the one thing you never know is how hungry a player is. How hungry are you to play in the pros, and where do you think you'll go? Uh, as far as um, destination, I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter because uh, I'm going to give them all wherever I end up. But, uh, yes, I'm very hungry. We speculated you'd go in maybe one or two top two picks. What do you think? Hey, that would be great. That would be great. You know, I... You know, I tried to give them all, and uh, you know, with the help of these guys, and I was able, I was fortunate, to, you know, to. Uh, be, whoa! I was I was fortunate enough to uh, end up with a, a great season this year, and uh, also I'd like to say that I'm a true believer that uh, a, a running back is only as good as his lineman allows him to be. So I credit my lineman uh, for most of this. All Eric right. Dickerson said that with the uh, Indianapolis Colts. They didn't like his offensive line. What about going to a team like the Colts? It, and like I said, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm going to give them 110% wherever I go. Congratulations. Great game tonight. Right. All right, Vaughn Dunbar, the former Juco All-American, went to Indiana, broke Anthony Thompson's single season rushing record this evening, had 265 yards in a game versus Missouri earlier this year. Is Chris Dyer calling the signals, and we have flags from all different countries going on the play. You know, we've talked about it a couple times tonight, Ron, and, and it's a wonderful night for Von Dunbar, but it really isn't his his night. It, it's, it's, it's the Mark Hagen's night, those seniors who right. realize now with four minutes left in their collegiate careers. Dead ball foul. Remember, they, they're ball just like you and I who grew up uh, in our wherever our own backyards, whatever our hometowns were, playing catch with our dads and the, the games you used to get in your backyard. Uh, loving the game, the passion, and football is one of those games you can't play in later life. You know, you you retire from some other sports. You can't. You can play softball. You can play basketball in the backyard, but not not football. So these guys, a lot of these guys, are really going to miss this. First down and 15, nearing the four-minute mark of the fourth and final quarter. Dyer, the handoff to Law with the right side. Boy, he's showing a little bit of speed, and the heir apparent to the spot of Vaughn Dunbar goes down to the 18-yard line and. I don't think my MVP would have to be Trent Green. I think he's played extremely well, and he's with Craig Sager right now. Well, thank you, Ron. He is right here. We talked to Von Dunbar. His career coming to a close. You have one more year left. You have to be happy with this team's playing tonight. Yeah, I'm real happy with the way things are going. Defense has done a good job getting us the shutout. I just feel so happy for the seniors. The defense has played spectacularly, but, of course, the offense, very efficient. Long drives, mixing up the plays, good blocking. Right. It, uh, they did an excellent job. Probably the only letdown was the third quarter. Um, you know, we didn't move the ball very well at all in that third quarter, but we're in 24 nothing. I'm just ecstatic. You came so close this year. You lost four games to Big Ten teams, also Notre Dame on the road. A couple of turns here, there. You can be playing in a major bowl. Right. What about next year? Uh, we're real excited about next year. Of course, we don't open up with as hard an opener as, uh, as Notre Dame, but we're real excited about the season. We've got to have a, uh, we have a lot of good young players, and uh, 
you know, hopefully the program go everywhere and up. Who's going to win, Michigan or Washington? I'm a big Michigan fan. I'm going to take them. They, uh, they took that victory away from us in Ann Arbor, so uh, I'm going to have to back them. Okay, congratulations. Uh, thank for, you. Ron? All right, for Green tonight, 11 of 21 for 165 yards. That was a 13-yard pickup by Law, bringing the ball down to the six-yard line, first and goal for Indiana. Not a bad uh, era apparent to Von Dunbar's no, no. Law. Here's a guy who broke all the high school records in Indiana for a running, bar, uh, running back. He had a ter very uh, productive high school career in the state of Indiana. Looks a bit awkward out there, but he's one of those guard guys who keeps moving the chains, picking up five, six yards. He has four carries for 40 yards so far this evening. Dyer will be hammered at the five-yard line. I think <laughs> as far as losing bowl games, uh, Grant Taft, who uh, shows a great deal of class no matter what he does on the field, had one of the most hysterical stories about when he lost the Cotton Bowl to Bear Bryant. He said, geez, I'm sitting there, my head's in my hands, I'm feeling terrible. Was, oh, Bear leaned over and that Alabama draw of this said, that's okay, son. At one point, I had the record for most losses in a bowl game. <laughs> Yeah, you hope you have a chance maybe to lose a few yeah, more. Lose a few more, yeah. <laughs> Why couldn't you have added to that tonight, Bear? 52. Not bad for Grant Tappé. Small town boy from Snyder, Texas. You know, Grant was also talking about his only bowl experience. He was a high school player, I mean a college player at San Angelo College in Texas. Played both ways. Actually played for five years. In those days you could do that. Started every game in five years. Started every game. Last play of the game. He gets knocked out. He's unconscious. Spends the night in the hospital. Didn't wake up till the next day. And it's funny because the coach had said, no bed check tonight. You go out and have a good time. And he missed the whole thing because he spent the night in the hospital. The Oleander Bowl in Galveston, Texas. When Galveston had uh, more than just bingo parlors on the strip. Third and goal. Ball in the six-yard line for Indiana. 155 left to be played. They lead it 24 nothing. The pitch back to Lawn. Baylor's defense is tight on this one. And we've got a penalty on the play. What a job Bill Mallory and his staff has done preparing yeah. for this bowl game. He said, you know, we came in like spring practice. We wanted to meet with all the players, make sure everybody had their heads on straight. Well, you know, too, Bill Mallory said, as excited as I, or happy as I am with this team, played hard, liked the senior class, really looking forward to next year's team. I think he's got a real nucleus of a good football team next year. He's got Michigan uh, at home next year. And again, that's kind of his benchmark, I think, of his season next year, be able to get over the hump to really compete for the Big Ten crown and, and perhaps even more is a win over Michigan at home. That would, because you get a lot of prestige in with recruits. I think a school like Indiana, you have great football in your state, but you still have to beat the names. But the peepers, your, your players really start believing too, Ron. I mean, that's what he was saying. Hey, we've got some guys here who are good players, but they haven't had that big win yet to really make them feel like they belong. Well, Grant Taft was 3-3 three and three in bowl games Woo! coming into tonight. He will drop to 3-4. and four. Bill Mallory, on the other hand, will go to 2-3 and three in bowl games while at Indiana. Offsides, defense, half the distance to the goal. So the offsides penalty gives uh, Indiana a fourth down and four yards to go from the goal line. And I don't think Indiana is trying to run up the score here, folks. I think what they're trying to do is run out the clock. Yeah. I... At least take some time off and not punch the field goal in. One fifteen left to be played in the contest. On the option, it is Dyer. Goes down to about the two-and-a-half-yard line, and Baylor will take over. 107 left to be played. And just a reminder, if you want to stay up late, watch a little movie on TBS. Coming your way, Garrett Morris and Cooley High. That'll come up. We'll be back for the final 67 seconds in a moment. Indiana on their way to a victory tonight in the Domino's Pizza Copper Bowl. And for Grant Taff and the Baylor Bears, it has been a while since they've been shut out. 21 games, as we mentioned, dating back to the first game of 1990 against Nebraska. As J.J. Joe will take a seat on the sideline. Steve Needham in at quarterback. Joe, not a very good night. Just 10 of 26 for 131 yards. And I think, Pat, it still is surprising that Baylor came out throwing the football and not sticking to what we thought would be their game plan, the banging in the fullback, which sets up everything else. Well, you're right. And, and so they ended up in that third and nine most of the evening. Well, believe it or not, Baylor called a timeout. 57 seconds left. And again, we'll be back. 
24-0 is our score, 57 seconds remaining in that young man's career in an Indiana uniform. Mark Hagan, nine tackles this evening, and what a way to go out. Being congratulated by the coaching staff, he says, I don't think it's going to hit me until after yeah. the football game, and that has, that's going to be tough. Needham looking for a little bit of running room, and as it has been all night, the Indiana defense closes quickly down at the eight-yard line. And the offensive MVP for the ball game, it's going to be Vaughn Dunbar. 28 rushes, 106 yards, a touchdown. I tell you what, that was close. I really thought it should have been Trent Green, but uh, the media here at the Copper Bowl go with Vaughn Dunbar, the offensive MVP, and Mark Hagan, the defensive MVP. Baylor doesn't want to go home with timeouts left in their pocket. They call their final one. Well, watch Troy Newton here, the senior guard, number 60. A good technique here on pointing the Gatorade over the, over the uh, head coach. He's right here. And good to get a sneak up behind him, right properly time it, make sure he's... Then he put, boom! Got him to look. I mean, that's, that's well done. That's, that's well done. And Bill Mallory, he is probably freezing because temperatures are in the high 30s, low 40s right now, but it is a happy cold as... And there is Troy, one of those seniors we've talked about several times tonight. Baylor trying to get everybody into the football game, which is a nice move by Grant Taff as we're down to the final 40 seconds of play as everybody gets in. Kendrick Bell, number 28. The freshman running him back out of Tyler, Texas. And there was one good running back out of Tyler, Texas, I remember. I think... Uh, what was Campbell. that guy's name? Played for Texas? Yeah, I remember his him. Name? Yeah. Earl Campbell. Yeah, that's, that's great. Right. The running Tyler backs. Rose. You know, Grant Taff was talking about, hey, yeah, Von Dunbar is a great running back that we got to face tonight, but he's faced some big ones, and, and uh, that's one. Earl Campbell, Campbell, right. Eric Dickerson, Craig James right. at SMU. Beautiful East Texas. Hopefully I'll be fishing there in two days in beautiful Scroggins, Texas. <laughs> Bet you don't know where that is. Right by Mount Vernon. On the run, Baylor trying to avoid a shutout out at the 43-yard line. It is Kendrick Bell. I'm not sure where Mount Vernon is. <laughs> Toman Don Meredith. <laughs> He's Texas. Uh, Jim Summerall on the tackle as we're down to the final 10 seconds of the 1991 Domino's Pizza Copper Bowl. We'd like to thank both staffs, the Baylor coaching staff, Maxie Parrish, the SID, Sports Information Director at Baylor, Kurt Klingerhofer, Kurt Klingerhofer the SID. Yeah, and Indiana. Let's go, baby. Bill Mallory and everybody associated with the Domino's Pizza Copper Bowl for Pat Hayden and myself and being so gracious to us the last couple of days. And that'll just about do it, the final five seconds. 1991, the bowl season for 91 is complete. The next bowls will be in 1992, and Indiana ends the year on a high note. They do they Indiana's first bowl shutout, also its first for Baylor. The Domino's Pizza Copper Bowl is history. Indiana wins it 24 to nothing. The 1991 Domino's defeat the Baylor Bears tonight in the Copper Bowl. The final again, 24 to nothing. Just a reminder, Atlanta Hawks basketball with the NFL, the NBA teams from Albert Verve fans. Once again, the final Hayden and our entire crew in beautiful Tucson, Arizona. I'm right. This run from the one foot line set up a Hoosier touchdown. Just before half, Dunbar takes the draw, scampers into the end zone, 17 0 Hoosiers at the break. You can't call it off. You got to have the halftime show, right? And they got to come back out there. Dunbar finished with 106 yards. As for Baylor, they were first in goal on the two, and goodbye. That's as close as they got. Indiana, 24, Baylor nothing, but Fred, back to that, son, that uh, Hancock Bowl. CLA 6, Illinois 3. <laughs> it was right there. <laughs> anyway, who's going to be the champion? We hope to know by tomorrow night at 11.30 p.m. Pacific.